Two of the best things you can do early on in Minecraft is to make an iron farm and make a villager breeder to start a villager trading hall. So I decided why have two separate farms for this when you can combine them into one? And that's what I've done with my two in one iron farm and villager breeder. And best of all, it's super easy to build and requires zero redstone. If you want to skip right to the tutorial on how to build this, I've included video chapters or you can check the timestamps in the description below to skip ahead. So how does this work? Well, let's start from the iron farm portion of this design. In Minecraft Java edition, villagers can summon iron iron golems either when gossiping or panicking. If you want to get the most out of this iron farm, then getting the villagers to panic is the way to go. To do this, we just need to trap a zombie near them with direct eye contact and they will continue to summon golems and we can expect a new golem about every minute or so. Once they do, we just need to use some water systems to drop them below into a lava blade and kill them and then we can collect their drops. Now let's look at how the villager breeder works. In order to get the villagers to breed, a couple conditions must be met. First, there needs to be at least one unclaimed bed in the boundary of the village. And secondly, the villagers must be willing to breed. To get villagers to be willing to breed, you just have to make sure they have either three bread, 12 carrots, 12 potatoes, or 12 beetroots in their inventory. So with this design, I fully automated the production, in this case, carrots, by using a farmer who will throw the excess carrots to our breeding villager below. And then once two of them have 12 carrots in their inventory, they'll breed. So now that you know how it works, Let's build it. All right, so these are the items you're gonna need in order to build this. And if you're gonna build it above ground, you're gonna need quite a few stacks of solid blocks. It doesn't have to be iron blocks, of course. Anything that's a solid block will suffice, whatever you wanna build it out of will do. I've also included three stacks of glass just because I kinda like to be able to see in at least to make sure the farmer is farming okay. So that's kinda nice to have, but these can be solid as well if you wish. And of course, if you're playing in survival, you're not going to be able to get these guys, the villager spawn eggs and the zombie spawn eggs. So it's probably best to build this near a village. Uh, if you go near a village, you probably want to make sure you're at least 50 blocks away from it or remove all the beds from that village and then go ahead and grab a couple villagers from that village. And then, of course, you can wait till nighttime to get a zombie to spawn and then get them to hold an item and that will make them not despawn. And I can show you a good way to get the zombie into the holding cell towards the end of the video. But these are basically what you're going to need. And I, of course, put a list in the description if you want to check that out so that you can can gather all the materials before the build. I also want to mention this dirt's not required. We're just going to use it as helper blocks. All right, so if you're going to build this above ground, then you want to go up eight blocks to give yourself some room for the little funnel that you're going to drop the golems and villagers into. And then once you're eight blocks up, make a five by five using your temporary blocks. Once you have your five by five done, you want to go eight blocks out in each direction. OK, so once you go out eight blocks in each direction, you can fill in the whole thing to make a complete square. All right, and when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. Now, the next step is is to build up some retaining walls around the outer edge of this all the way around. So for that, we just go one block up, but in the corners, we need to start here and actually do one extra block. All right, and when you're done, it should look like that. Now it's time to get our temporary blocks out and we're gonna place three in the corner, just like that on all four sides. Now it's time to put the water in place and I'm gonna switch into survival to show you how you can do this with just two buckets. So what we wanna do is starting here, we're gonna put down one bucket and you can see that's empty now. And put down a second bucket, two blocks over from that. And now that creates an infinite source here in the middle, which we can then pick up. Now we need to just go skip a block, put one in, and then you can go back a block and pick it back up because it creates that infinite source over and over again. And we continue to do that all the way around. And then when we get in the corner, all we need to do is do this back corner block right there, come back, pick up one of our infinite sources from before and start all over on the next edge. All right, once the water's all in, it should look like this. The water should be crossing over just one block of your temporary blocks, leaving a three by three dry right there in the middle. If it doesn't look like this, that means you either misplaced some water or you didn't build the proper amount of blocks out to the edge here. But once that's done, we can remove our temporary blocks in here and then we need to get our stairs out. And where this water is crossing over our temporary blocks right here, we're gonna swap it out with stairs. And we wanna go all the way around in a circle so that this corner connects and it should turn just like that. And when you're done, it should look like this. Okay, now we wanna to go to the center and we wanna go three blocks up from the exact center of this entire thing. And then from there, we're gonna put a bed right there in the center facing out like that. We're gonna hold shift and place a couple blocks on both sides of this bed and then two beds on top of those blocks. Now we can remove these extra blocks here. 
All right, now let's place the trapdoors. We're going to start by placing one against this bed by holding shift there and flip that up. And then on the sides right here and here, and then on the other side as well. And then we need to place a couple more to make sure the villagers can't get out. So we go two blocks up right there. And then the same thing on this side, two blocks up and another one right there. And then come around to the side and two blocks above that trapdoor that we placed on the side. We put another one right there. Same thing on the other side. And then in the middle here, we're going to go two blocks up from the top of this trapdoor place a glass block on top of that, remove these, and then underneath the glass block, we're gonna place the trapdoor right there. On either side of this glass block, we're gonna do another trapdoor there and there, and then just to make sure no golems can spawn up here, we place trapdoors across the top as well. So if you're not gonna include the farm that's gonna be supplying the carrots, at this point, you will need to kind of repeat the same exact thing on the back side of this. So again, it would just be two blocks up from here, trapdoor, glass above this, with the trapdoor underneath, Trapdoor on the back side of the bed, flipped up. Trapdoor on the side, and again across the top. You can remove your temporary blocks, and then finally trapdoors right here and here. And that should make it so that any villagers in this do not get out. Alternatively, if you want to build it so the farm is next to it, like I have in that design right there, then you don't need these across the back. And instead, from the back side of this bed, we go three blocks up, and this will be your first piece of farmland. These two blocks underneath can then be removed. So let's go ahead and build the carrot farm now. We want to go four blocks total, and then in the middle here, we're going to have our water holding cell. For this, you can use a slab or a stair and just go ahead and waterlog that. We'll do that in a second. We'll do another four blocks in this direction and then actually on all four sides. Once you've gone out four blocks in all four directions from the center, go ahead and fill in the entire square. Once your square is filled in, you should have a nine by nine area here and you can waterlog that slab or stair, whatever you decided to use there. And now you will need a tool that I didn't include in the initial materials, and that is a hoe in order to turn this into farmland. Once you've tilled the soil, go ahead and grab whatever carrots you can. If you can fill in the whole thing, great. If not, you'll just have to be a little more patient and wait for these to grow and your farmer to farm them. Once all that is planted, let's go ahead and grab our glass. Or like I said before, if you don't need to look in on this, you can use solid blocks as well. And we're going to go up two blocks on all four sides. When you get to the back, you want to find the middle point and take out that bottom block right there. And we're going to put a composter in instead of glass. And this is what the villager will use to get a workstation so that he can become a farmer and will actually harvest these crops. And then on the opposite side where the villager beds are, we want to take out these two blocks and then use our slab right here. This is going to make it so that villager can actually see the three villagers that are down here on the beds and pass them some carrots. And just to make sure no, no golems spawn on this block, we can put a bell there. That actually helps. It kind of pulls over the villager that's doing the farming uh, at night to come gossip with these guys in bed. And if you can't get a bell from a, a village nearby, then just go ahead and make sure you put something on there to make it so it's not spawnable. Well, either glass or a trapdoor should work. And then just so the villager doesn't have any problems with this middle space, let's put a couple blocks above that and let's go ahead and put a torch or some sort of lighting right there to help get some light to these crops. And also while we have our torches in hand, let's go ahead and just put one on each corner so that if it does become nighttime, we don't have any hostile mobs spotting on this thing. All right, so at this point, let's go ahead and bring our villagers in. You can bring them in via minecart or boats, or if you're in a cheaty creative mode like I am, we could use a spawn egg. So, of course, we're going to need three in the beds here, and you'll see them get their sparkles as they claim their beds, and then, of course, one in here to do the farming. And there we go. You turn into a farmer right away. Now, before we do anything else, we want to wait until nighttime and just make sure these three villagers actually lay down in those beds. All right, that's looking good. All right, now that these villagers have claimed beds, let's go ahead and set up the extra beds we're going to need for the breeding part of this. So what we'll do is we'll just come out a couple blocks from this trapdoor right there, leave that one space there. That's where we're going to put a trapdoor that kind of fakes the baby into thinking he can walk across to this bed here. Important that we face this out so the head of the bed is faced out that way. And that way the baby can't actually get into bed if it's turning nighttime. And I'm just going to swap these blocks out so it looks a little better. And then we do the same thing on this side as well. Two blocks out. Face the bed outwards. Trap door in. There we go. Okay, so before we bring in the zombie and they start summoning golems, I think we better make the chamber underneath that the golem's going to drop down into with the lava blade and collection system, as well as the collection point for the baby villagers that are being bred. All right, so now we'll come underneath the farm and we're going to go down four blocks from where the stairs are. So one, two, three, four. And then we're going to make this three wide. Can remove these temporary blocks. And then from this bottom block, we're going to go eight out. 
All right, and when you're done, it should look like this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my glass and just fill in the sides so that they kind of use this as guardrails and there's nowhere the golems can go or the baby villagers can go as they come through here. But you can, of course, use solid blocks if you can't afford the glass or if you don't mind not being able to look in. All right, and once that's in, you can get some water. And once again, with your two water buckets, you can make an infinite water source. And when we fill that in, it should go right to the ledge just like that. Now we're actually gonna replace these last three blocks with hoppers to collect the iron. So you can send this wherever you like. For now, I'm just going to put a chest right here at the end. And because I had glass on top of this, it can still open. And then we'll just replace these blocks here with hoppers. All right, next step is we need to get our lava in. So we're gonna come under our three by three of temporary blocks that is left. And just from the side here, start to place some signs on top of each other by holding shift and apparently D as well. And there we go, we've stacked three signs and that should help hold this lava back. And then we come down one block here. So there's one block gap there, sign on here, and we stack these signs again. And we're gonna go all the way across four blocks out with these signs. At that point, we can hold shift and place our lava against this middle sign right here. And then that should flow perfectly across all the signs. Once it's done flowing out, it should look just like this. Now right here at the end, so the golem actually gets stopped and held in the lava, we're gonna put some blocks right here. Since golems are three tall, that will keep them from going off the edge. The babies on the other hand will be just fine. They'll go underneath, they won't get hit by any lava and we need to drop them down into a little holding cell of their own. So we'll just go down a couple blocks just like this and I'll make a three by three holding cell right here. Here, which we need to again use glass or if you want solid blocks you can do that as well just to keep these guys in and if you really want to be safe you can enclose this entire thing also what I like to do to help get these guys out is if we put a water source back in that corner there and have it flow over here that means we could easily pick the villagers up when we need them having a minecart run down this way and it should pick them up through the corner of the glass if they're pushed in the corner properly all right now we are ready to bring in the zombies so let's prepare for that we can actually remove these temporary blocks so that if a golem does spawn he will go down below and start generating some iron we need the spot where the zombies actually going to stand and to do that we go two blocks out from that trapdoor with a temporary block we're going to completely surround this with trapdoors so we're going to put one there and then one on all four sides here and then we're gonna go a few blocks above this. And what we wanna do here is actually put a slab so that once the zombie's in here, the sun won't burn him to death. And then you can take out these temporary blocks. And this is exactly where we need to get our zombie. Now, of course, I could spawn one in right now because I'm in creative mode, but I wanna show you how to bring one in in survival fairly easily. The next thing we're gonna do is we need to get a zombie into this holding cell here. So what we wanna do is actually build it up a little bit so he cannot get out. So we're gonna put some extra trap doors on the sides here. And that way, once he's in this chamber, there's nowhere for him to go. And then basically we need to coax him into coming in here and dropping into this. And then we can put something over his head so he can't get out. So at this point, we want to go ahead and build a stair step down to the side of this farm here and we will go out at night, brave it a little bit, see if we can get a zombie to go up this staircase, come into here because he thinks he can get after those villagers. And once he drops into here, there is nowhere for him to go. Also build yourself up a little holding cell like this because when you're out at night and you attract a zombie, he's gonna be wanting to come after you and we need him to get his attention on those villagers instead. So build yourself something like this that you can jump in really quick, put a block in place, lose the eye contact with that zombie and then he's gonna go up there instead and hopefully drop right into this chamber right here. Also it would probably help to put some guardrails on the side here just to make sure he doesn't fall off as he's trying to get in. So something like that should help. Once he's in, there's nowhere for him to go. And then we need to give him something to hold. So I'm gonna pick a wooden sword. Cheapest thing we can get him to pick up, I guess. And I'm gonna go into survival so I can show you guys how this works. And let's go out at night. We find a zombie. Here he comes and we throw down a sword and hope he picks it up. Now be ready because if he doesn't, he, he's going to have to die. <laughs> and you're going to have to find another zombie who's willing to pick up a weapon here. So we'll keep trying this over and over again until we have somebody that actually picks up the sword. Now you don't have to do this if you do have a name tag. You can always just name them. But this is how we get them to not despawn if we walk away from this farm. And there we go, that one picked it up. So let's go ahead and get away from him as fast as we can. Let's block that off. And now let's hope that he can realize there's villagers for him to get after. And there he goes, he's going up in there and hopefully he falls right into our little basket that we made. 
There we go. He's in. Nowhere for him to go. Let's break out of here. And then as we go up here, we can just put a trap door above his head right there at that level, the bottom block level. And there's nowhere for him to go. Now we can clean all of this up. Take all of our temporary blocks out that we used to get him in there. In fact, we don't need the second layer of trapdoors on the side. If you want to go ahead and remove those, you can. Be careful not to hit your zombie there. And uh, you can see immediately the villagers started to panic because he now has eye contact, which means a golem should be spawning shortly. There it is, right there. Let's go ahead and clean up the rest of these stairs. Clean up your holding cell, no longer needed. All right, and once daytime comes around, your zombie should be just fine as long as you covered him with the block there, which we have done. And he is now scaring the villagers and they are creating golems. So we can go down in here and see we've already got some iron and somehow I threw in one of the wooden swords in there. But yes, it is now working. We haven't seen any babies being born just yet. And that is because the farmer has yet to produce enough crops to give to these guys. So let's go ahead and just to make sure the farm works let's give them a stack of carrots and we'll see if we get the breeding portion of this working as well and there we go here's the little guy right there he should work his way off these beds really soon there he goes and he'll just fall into the water below and make his way to our holding chamber. And right behind him is another golem. So there you go. Two in one system is working great. And eventually he finds his way down. And there you go. That is all that is needed to build this up. If you guys enjoyed the video, please do me a favor and hit that like button. It really does help. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please make sure you do that because I will be doing more tutorials in the future. And also I am on Hermitcraft, which is a server full of amazing YouTubers that make some let's play content that i think you would enjoy if you haven't seen it before so make sure you check that out as well but with that said i will see you again next time have a good one everyone